Welcome to Real Terms for AI on the road. We're here with Rody, one of our developer advocates, and we're going to ask him some questions about agents. Right on. Let's Jason, why don't you start? All right. This is the most important question we're going to ask you all week. All right. What is an agent? An agent is something that takes action until a goal is met or other software conditions are in there. So like, for example, you may want to like respond to API calls, but if there's a condition that says like, you know, uh, we fulfill the request, you want to stop it or do other things. All right, you said something in that, which I think is actually really important because we talk to software developers a lot. How do you define stopping conditions? Is it in the agent? Is it in the application code? Is it in both? And how do we think about that? Yeah, ideally it's something that the developer orchestrates or the user defines because uh, for every agent, it's gonna be different. Like for some people, um, there's gonna be like safety concerns. If they ever see something, we wanna stop immediately. Other times it's like, you know, the goal's completed. Like we have an app prototyping agent and if it, you know, builds a design, then we know it's done. Another question for you. What's your aha moment with agents? It's like when you can give it minimal input, it's able to take a lot of action and do things that you would not have expected it to. So like, for example, Gemini Deep Research for me has just blown me away on like, it is actually something that I would have done like going into 40 sites. And when it comes back and gives me a summary of all the things that I was going to research anyway, but I could be doing something else is super awesome. I've, uh, I found that with the thinking model. Like half the time I don't even read the actual output. I just read what it thought. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I missed like step three. Do step three and then I'm yeah, good yeah. to go. Super cool. So you're here demoing Firebase Studio. That's right. So I bet you have some thoughts on vibe coding. Yeah, for me, I really like it when you can uh, build some kind of an app, especially when you have a rough idea, you're not quite sure where it's gonna go yet. And especially if someone's like, hey, I have an idea for an app. You can throw it into um, some kind of an LLM that can generate vibe coding. Uh, Firebase Studio is especially good at this. And you can get a very good first working copy out really quickly. How do you, uh, how do you envision vibe coding and then that UX partnership? Because I actually think it gets even better, right, with these things, even though at first it seems kind of scary. Yeah, I think the best part about it is the rapid iteration on both parties. And if you're coming together, it just lets you have more things to talk about than less. And one of the biggest things you have with teams is like a blank canvas problem. And that's both with code and design. So if you can just get the first iteration out, you at least have something to iterate on. When was the last time you vibe coded? So this will be a little bit nerdy, but a couple of days ago, I vibe coded a SQLite C extension. So that was really fun. <laughs> that is very nerdy and yeah. awesome at the same time. Yeah. And surprisingly complex. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We always end with happy, happy prompting. prompting. So happy prompting, prompting on, on three. three. Awesome. One, One two, two, three. Happy prompting. Happy prompting. prompting. Happy prompting. Happy prompting. Happy prompting. Right. One, One, two, three. Happy prompting. Happy prompting.